Ahoy there, mateys! My name is Ingus, and welcome to my Ports and Islands only Ultimate Iron Man challenge, called King of the Pirates. In this video, we'll be covering the rules and what I did at the start of this account. Although it is similar to my hardcore Iron Man, may he rest in peace, I did spend more time doing research to iron out all the small details for this challenge. First off, if you didn't know already, this is a ports and islands only account, meaning I am restricted to these areas for gaining XP or obtaining items. In order for this account to be possible, a few exceptions have to be made. Many islands and runescape can only be unlocked through quests. Therefore, I am allowed to do quests if it leads to unlocking a new area, as highlighted on the map. If you look closely at the restricted areas, you might realize that some of the most powerful equipment in RuneScape can be obtained with these. For this reason, I have opted to restrict my headgear slot to one of the following pirate themed items. This prevents me from gaining set effect bonuses from these armors, which would make the challenge much too easy in my opinion. Next up is clue scrolls. I can't imagine doing a pirate challenge without being able to complete clue scrolls. Unfortunately, many of the items required to complete them cannot be obtained within the restricted zone, and many clue locations lie outside the bounds. Therefore, I've applied the following penalties to clue scrolls. If I obtain an item outside the boundaries for a clue, I must drop it as soon as I complete the clue. I cannot alk it or sell it back to the shop. Additionally, I cannot teleport outside the bounds for the sake of the clue. This will force me to use charter ships, which could cost a sizable amount of GP just to complete one clue. With these penalties in mind, I think clue scrolls are a fair game for this challenge and will bring a lot of fun variety to the game. In Ultimate Iron Man mode, you are unable to use banks in RuneScape. This severely restricts the amount of items you can keep. However, there are a few ways to go beyond your 28 inventory spaces, and one of these ways is through stash units. If I obtain the necessary items to build a stash unit within the boundaries, I will allow myself to use stash units for storage. I actually have no idea if it is even possible to use any of these, but I think it's worth mentioning and might prove valuable late game. This brings us to the fun part. Bosses. Dagnoth Kings, Zolra, Kraken, and the deranged archaeologists can all be found within the restricted zones, as well as Jad and Zuck. You're probably wondering, what best in slot gear can I obtain for this account? For melee, most of our gear will be collected from the Tazar area, including the Fire Cape and the Inferno Cape. And our best boots will be the granite boots dropped by wyverns on Fossil Island. For range, most of our best in slot gear will come from Clue Scrolls. For mage, our best gear will be unlocked through bosses primarily. At first glance, this gear does seem a bit overpowered, but keep in mind that I'm playing on an ultimate Iron Man, and so I won't be able to use all this gear at the same time. Additionally, most of this gear won't be available for a very long time anyways, so I'll be in much worse gear for the majority of the series. And on that note, I'm allowed one last item, the Anti-Dragon Shield. Without it, I cannot kill Elvarg for Dragon Slayer. There's also the incredibly rare chance that I obtain a Draconic Visage from Metal Dragons, allowing me to create my own Dragonfire Shield. This would be my only protection against Wyvern Slayer creatures unless we allow for Elemental Workshop 1. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. I've debated the use of Fairy Rings for quite a while. Some locations such as the Kraken Cove and the Lighthouse are impossible to get to without the Fairy Rings. Additionally, there are a few tiny islands only used for clue scrolls I would be able to access as well. The locations on the screen would be the only locations I could go to, and the Draymond staff would also take up another precious inventory space, so I think the trade-off is quite reasonable. Again, let me know what you think about this exception in the comments below. Lastly, this brings us to the first major goal for our account, completing Lunar Diplomacy. The requirements are quite high and might take a few months to get, but completing the quest would unlock so much new content for this account. Currently, there is no way to train Slayer on this account except through XP lamps. And we also need 42 Slayer to start Rum Deal to unlock most of Harmless Island. 
The only Slayer Master within the restricted zone is Duradel, who requires 50 Slayer and 100 combat to use. After some research, I realized that the Slayer problem could be solved with a single spell from the Lunar Spellbook, NPC Contact. Additionally, Lunar Diplomacy would unlock Astral Runes, allowing us to train our runecrafting once it reaches level 40 through lamps. Okay, that's all the details to this challenge. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything or if you have any thoughts or suggestions. Alright, we are here with a new character. The first thing I did was trade over a bond to just get the membership going. After that, we completed Restless Ghosts, which got us 9 prayer. And Cook's Assistant. And we started the RFD, just to get that while we're here. Next, we just worked on Pirate's Treasure, and Pirate's Treasure complete. After that, we went straight to thieving, pickpocketing men, to 32 thieving, with a couple random events inside. We also tried stealing some candles to see if it was better XP, but this is like, most of the time you failed as soon as you got it. And then back to pickpocketing, we finally got 32 after hours of thieving this dude. Next was another hour of pickpocketing this dude, and you can see cakes in my inventory actually, there's, it's really hard to thieve this guy without food, so uh, I did get some cakes from Artie. Finally we did get the iron dagger, and I was trying to poison this bear for the druidic ritual, but the bear didn't give me any bear meat. So I said I just skipped it. Next was Priest in Peril, and I misclicked on this damn ladder and had to restart the poison on this dude. Finally, he went down. And in the meantime, I forgot we needed to get Rune Essence for Priest in Peril, so we had to complete some steps on Rune Mysteries. And here I am buying a house so I can use my XP lamp. I was doing the Venom trick with my main and this happened. <laughs> Since we died, we just went straight back to the wizard's tower to complete rune mysteries and a construction XP lamp. Here we almost died again because I was out of food. Yeah. Finally, we managed to beat him, but I forgot to record. Um, but yeah, it uh, took a few hours. It took me four trips to run this rune essence to the monk, and on my fourth trip, I got there and there was one left. Priest in Peril complete. And that got us 15 prayer. Next up, we completed Druidic Ritual and Shield of Arav. Next, uh, we took a detour at Brimhaven Dungeon and climbed this wall for like 3 hours to get 32 agility, which is a quest requirement for Shiloh Village. And there's 32 agility. We got ourselves a mystery box and we got a steel plate body, which is really damn good. There's Plague City Quest, which got us 15 mining. I was doing Biohazard, and I finally poisoned the Mourner without any food. I was thinking I could just go through the door, but it looks like he just lost his poison somehow. So, yeah. Back to the cake stall. And finally, we got him. And quest complete, biohazard is done. Next up we just had Merlin's crystal left, and there's a way to do this. So if you venom Sir Mordred and then wait until the last second, all you have to do is attack him once and the lady on the wall will speak to you. Next up we had to get some bat bones, and we succeeded in poisoning him. Another construction XP tome. There's Merlin, and Merlin's crystal complete.
And finally we dropped the iron dagger that took us so long to get. And we are on our way again. Alright, uh, the bulk of the questing is done for now. We are currently sitting at combat 5. And here's the stats. We got 15 prayer, 35 thieving, 32 agility, 3 herb lore, and 15 mining. Uh, mostly all from the quests. The next quest that we can do is jungle potion. However, I don't have any anti-poisons, and if you've seen the other series, instead of farming, I'm going to just save up enough coins to buy an anti-poison, because I didn't even need it for the quest anyways. Plus, we need um, bronze knives, and we need to be able to wear this armor. Some decent combat stats to finish Shiloh Village. I thought about using the iron dagger poison to do it, but um, I think we can just do it normally and safe spot the guy so yeah that's where we're at if you enjoyed this episode please leave a like and subscribe to the channel and here's a couple amazon gift cards that are obviously fake but you know amazon gift cards you know there you go